All right, this is a painting tutorial, watercolor painting tutorial. And this time we are going to do a crocodile, crocodile. All right, so this painting has kind of a bonus lesson at the end that is optional. Um, and that's the charcoal. So if you look here, this is a watercolor painting that I added some charcoal to, to get some uh, definition and a little bit of value and a little bit of shading. Um, you are not required to do the charcoal portion. It's at the very, very end. So you can just do the drawing and the watercolor and call it good and turn it in. Um, but if you'd like to try the charcoal, I would. I think it, I think it made it look a little, 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 little spiffy. Um, so for this project, you will need for sure paper, pencil, watercolor set with a brush, you know, water, paper towel, all of that. And the charcoal pencil is optional. Any charcoal pencil is fine. I use the charcoal pencil that I provided in the sets. Um, let's get going. All right, let's get started on our crocodile. So for this one, um, because the crocodile is a lo is long, we're going to be working in landscape, so have it laying down on the side. Um, this tutorial is a little more challenging, so you might have to pause um, <coughs> pause and practice and erase a little bit more than you're used to. Uh, but let's get started. So just like a lot of other drawing tutorials, we're going to start with just kind of some basic shapes. And then we'll go in and kind of carve out the detail in our shapes, all right? So you need to make sure that you don't make it too big initially because a crocodile is going to have its mouth and then its tail. So if you make these few shapes too large, then you'll run out of space. Just wanted to give you a heads up on that. So we're going to start with the body. And the body um, starts with kind of a non an unfinished oval okay an unfinished oval now remember draw it right until you get it or draw it light sorry draw it light until you get it right um, I'm drawing it kind of dark here so you can see um, an unfinished oval all right now this is like the gonna be the tummy and the back part and then the tail is gonna go back here so to get where the tail is gonna go we're gonna kind of continue this oval line up and create create the tail shape here so I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna kind of continue right almost like I'm making a backwards six okay and we'll have it go a little bit more right here we may have to come back and adjust the tail. It just kind of depends on how it's turning out. Um, and then we're going to make kind of a half moon shape right here, okay? Right here. So, like I said, we might want to adjust that later once we get it laid out. But that, but that's generally, generally the kind of shape we're looking for, okay? Um, and now we're going to draw the circle that's going to be the foundation for the head. And it's just going to be located right over here. And it is actually pretty big it's actually pretty big okay and it's pretty close to touching our little body shape right here all right it's pretty big and it's just a circle I made mine just a little bit of an oval only because I wasn't looking uh <coughs> looking looking at it <laughs> while I was looking at the video um but here we go so we have our foundation so let's add a, a few more little like markers for things. First, let's do the mouth. So you guys know crocodiles have the big, the big mouth. Right up here from the top of the circle, we're going to draw a curved line. It's very, very ever so slightly curved, okay? It's not like really, really severe. And then we're going to round out, round out the end, round out the end. And then we're going to do another curved line and it's going to go up just like that. Okay, so this is going to be the top of the mouth. Now let's draw where the bottom of the mouth is going to go. So I don't know, about, about halfway along this curved line, we're going to draw another curved line. And it should be similar to this one. Okay, similar to this one, just like we did up here. We're going to round it out right on the bottom. And then we're going to continue it up right here. Okay, so we should have, we're going to have the top of the mouth, then we have the bottom, what will be the bottom of the mouth. Sorry, I made that a little big here. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, um, front leg. So it's kind of, he's like kind of crouched down, all right? We're gonna start by 
finding the lowest point of your circle, and you're gonna scoot up just a little, just a little, and draw a curved line. Just a little, little line nugget right there. And from there, we're gonna go over to the body shape, okay, over to the body shape, and right kind of a, about even with where you drew it on the head shape, you're gonna draw, I don't know, it's kind of it's kind of like a football shape. I don't know. You can just watch. It comes down to a little point, and then this right here. That, my friends, is the elbow, right? So this is that bend right here of the elbow, and then we need to draw the curved line that's going to make the forearm for our gator, and that is going to go right down like here. So just a curved line. So these are just kind of series of curved lines that that is going to that's going to help us get that front leg. All right, so let's go back here to the to the rear and draw the leg that's going to come right out here. So same thing. It's kind of a series of of curved lines that overlap and and intersect in certain spots. So right if we were to continue this around, right where it would meet up is where we're going to draw a curved line, okay? A curved line, just kind of coming out, coming out of the back there. And then we're gonna draw another curved line and it's gonna kinda, it's almost like, I don't really know how to describe it. Um, it's like this one, if it were to fall into a bowl, I guess is the, is the best I can come up with. So I'm gonna start right up here and I'm gonna do a curved line right here. And actually I made it a little wide, see how far it is from here, so I'm going to erase it. I'm going to erase it and it should be closer to right here okay so see what I mean it's like this piece is kind of falling into a bowl that's the best that's the best I got guys <laughs> um, and then one more line and this is going to help us get that foot that's this is going to help us get the get the spot for the foot so right I don't know this curved line find about the middle about the middle and you're going to draw a curved line that goes up and then shoots back down Okay, and then shoots back down. So we've got, you, you might be able to kind of see where this is going. Head, body, tail, and then the two legs that are in our view, okay? All right, let's just keep adding a little bit, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. All right, let's go up to the top of the head and we're gonna kind of draw the lines that are gonna show where the eyes are, the eyes are, <laughs> sorry. Um, so I'm going right up here from the snoot and the eye, this, the eye that's on this side is gonna go about right here, okay? So I just drew kind of a light line to kind of help me, uh, kind of help me lay it out. Because if, if you look at a picture of an alligator, their eyes are kind of set in these bumps that are on the top of their head. So let's draw the bump that's gonna be the eye on the other side of the head to, to give it a little more realistic look. So I'm going up the snoot right about here. And right about here, let me erase a few of those lines. Sorry, it's a little messy. Right about here, we're gonna draw a lot, little line up. I don't know if you can see that little line nugget. And then we're gonna draw the top part of the lid. Okay, we're gonna draw the top part of the lid. And then we're gonna continue that down right here. And then we're gonna curve a line and that's gonna create, that's gonna connect the head with our body, okay? So again, I start with the snoot, um, right right before, right before where the snoot kind of meets the circle, I did just a kind of a straight line to create the top of the lid, and then I continued it down, okay? And then, and actually the little eye that I drew isn't quite in position, so I'm going to erase it. And what I need to do is I need to kind of match that shape on this side, okay? Match that shape, so match this shape, just down a little bit, almost as if you were to copy and paste it right below. And that is where we're gonna draw our eye here in just a second. Um, a couple, we got a couple couple more lines. So gators kind of have this like, I don't know, big flappy kind of under their chin or their jaw, like their neck. So we'll draw a few lines for that. So right here, right along this bottom part, we're gonna draw just a curved line. Okay, we're starting to kind of carve out our gator. Right here, right where the leg meets this kind of what's gonna be the neck area, we're going to do a curve line, okay? A curve line to kind of round that out a little bit. Um, 
let's draw we will we won't see the whole we're sorry we're moving back here we won't see the whole back leg but we will kind of see the like the knee because he's like crouched and, and ready to go so right here right where the kind of the tail starts we're going to move over just a little and it's kind of like half of a heart it's kind of half of a heart that's the best way i can describe it and that's that back leg kind of scrunched up like he's moving so i'm going to erase this line in here just just to make it a little clearer Okay, just to make it a little clearer. Bam, all right, bam. Few more things. So the back of a gator and along the tail, and this is the part where we might want to adjust the tail, but but maybe not. I I, I maybe not. We'll see. Um, there are kind of like the these rows of ridges, and they follow the length of the crocodile's body. So we're gonna draw some lines to help us lay those in later when we um, when we use our paint. So starting from right about here okay right up i i don't really know how to describe it so it's like if you split the circle in half moved in just a little this is going to be the bottom line and it's going to help us kind of lay out the that pattern so right here i'm going to draw a curved line okay a curved line that's going to go all the way down the body and then it's going to wrap along the tail so i'm going to follow that tail shape and I'm going to intersect just somewhere up here, just kind of somewhere where you end up, okay? So just wrap it all the way around. So nice big curved line. Uh, we need to do a couple of more because again, I said it was like a, it's like a row. So if you move right here, so if you look where we drew this curved line, you see where these intersect right here? That's where we're gonna start the other side of that. So I'm gonna draw it right here. Now, when we get to the body, because the body is curved, we're gonna draw a curved line this way, okay? Again, so I started right here, kind of a straight right here, but since we hit that back, that back of that belly, it's, it, is, it is curved. And then we're gonna follow the curve around and it's going to slowly meet up back here with our tail, slowly meet up with our tail. And actually, yeah, we will, we will probably reshape the tail, but that's okay. I'll wait until we get done with this part. Um, and then just one more. We've got this right here. Do you see this kind of the top part right underneath the leg? We're gonna do that same kind of deal with where this line ends. So again, I'm working right here on the back. See this little line nuggy right here? That is also going to connect up, okay? So this is the part of the gator where those ridges kind of follow along along the back. Um, let's go ahead and adjust our tail a little. Uh, you might not need to, but I'm, I'm looking at this and, and it's just not quite right. So I'm going to erase it right here. All a part of the process. I'm going to erase it and I want my tail to be a little more, um, not, not quite so tall right here. And I want it to be skinnier at the end. Oops. I want it to be skinnier at the end. My hand didn't listen. <laughs> I want it to be skinnier at the end than it was before, but still get bigger as it wraps towards the body. There we go. Yeah, I'm liking that. And then I'll erase some of these lines right up here. Okay. That line right there isn't quite curved enough. All right. Yeah, I'm liking how that looks. Um, okay, uh, let's add our toes. We need to add our toes to our gator. So we're working on this front one. I'm gonna follow this line right here. This point actually where I ended is going to be the starting point of our, of our claw. So I'm gonna draw, it's kind of, it's just a curved line to make my little toe, my little toe. And then I'm going to draw almost like like star points. I mean, they're essentially kind of like a rounded triangle around that. So I'll do one right here, one right here, uh, and then I'll do one right here coming out right there. 
and then I'm gonna draw a curved line and that's kind of the that's kind of the palm right here and that's not all the toes uh, they do have five so I'm gonna go on the other side to draw those other toes and those just kind of stick out just like this same kind of shape that I was doing and then this one right here all right so that is our crocodile hand let's go back here and we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna add our toes so just like with this one this line continues right here I'm gonna use that as the starting point for my like middle toe kind of and then I'll draw the others so I'm gonna do this one right here I'm gonna start draw a curved line right here okay and then I'm gonna have that meet up with that toe, bada bing, bada boom. And then we have a couple couple of toes coming out here. And the way this one is drawn, we cannot see that fifth one. Okay, we cannot see that fifth one. But just something like that. All right, something like that looks good. All right, let's keep on trucking. Uh, add, add a couple more details. Um, but first, let's erase a couple of these lines, a couple of these guidelines that we're just not going to need, okay? So first, I'm going to start right back here, kind of where the head meets the body, and I'm going to erase this line right here, okay? Uh, I'll erase this line right here, this one too, okay, this one too. Just make it a little clearer, so I erase those. Uh, I'll clean this up just to just a wee bit. Um, I'll erase this line right here. We can't see it because it's cutting through the leg. Um, this this line right here, I'll also kind of clean up. Um, we won't need a good chunk of that. Some of these lines up here. Uh, any others that you see? Some of those original guidelines. Um, we're, we're pretty good. We've got our shape, so we can erase them. That way we've got a little bit clearer picture of what we're working with. Um, all right, so let's start up. Let's add, let's carve out some details on the head, on the head. Uh, so first of all, let's complete this jaw. So this was just kind of the basic setup. So we need to draw a few things to get it, to get it looking like it should. So this one right here, this bottom line, we're going to continue it up right here, all the way up. And it is actually going to meet up here with the eyeball, okay, with the eyeball. So I just drew, continued it up right here, and then I drew another curved line and it met up with my line for my eye, for my eyeball, okay? Um, so let's actually draw our eye. This right here, is just kind of, the, that's the eyelid. So we need to still draw our eye. We'll start with a curved line, kind of sitting right in that little spot we made. We'll hang a, hang a half circle from it. And we'll do a pupil right here. Okay, there we go, we've got our eyeball. Uh, now let's let's work let's work on some of this some of this mouth stuff. Okay, first of all we got to do the nose. They do have a little they have a nose. Uh, we'll go right to the end of this upper upper um, upper jaw, uh, and it's kind of like a comma. I don't know if you can see that or like a hurricane symbol, uh, which is what mine looks like. And then the nostril just kind of hangs out right behind it. Okay, so then we need to complete the mouth because right now it's not like it should be. So the inside of a crocodile's mouth, it's actually kind of, it's wavy and it's bumpy, the gums and the way the mouth closes together. So I'm going to start right here, okay? Um, and I'm going to add just a few bumps. I don't know how else to describe it. Just some bumps, okay? Bumps. They're somewhat irregular because it's an organic shape right? So it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you just need to add a little bit of, you just need to add a little bit of bumpy bumps. We'll add the teeth here in just a second. And then his mouth is open. So we'll be able to see the both rows of teeth in this bottom one and also kind of inside the bottom of the jaw. So find the end and right up here, uh, pretty close, pretty close to the end, we're going to draw another bumpy layer to kind of match this one. So I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna have it bump here. Then I'm gonna have it bump here. OK, 
okay? And then I'll have it bump right here. See how it kind of matches because it needs to match when the gator closes his mouth. Um, and then actually I am going to draw a curved line right back here. They've got like, a, I don't know how to describe it, kind of a webbing, uh, it, you know, in right at where the hinge of the jaw is. Uh, and then I'll continue this line up kind of like here, okay? That's not really a regular shape, so I don't really know how to describe it to you other than just to do, just to do it. And then you can have it coming up right here if you want them to have a little bit of a smile. Uh, all right, so let's add a few teeth just to just to kind of denote where the teeth are. We will add some more later, um, but let's do like one right here. Okay, right here. Add a few right here. Rawr! Yeah. And we'll add a couple down here, one right here. Do one right here. I don't know. <coughs> Excuse me, wherever you think some teeth should go. We'll go through and add, because you know gators have bigger teeth and then smaller teeth kind of set inside. We'll go through and add some of those smaller teeth here in just a second. Let's do one right here. Yeah, let's do a few back here. All righty. Um, uh, let's look here. Let's add these little toenails on his feetsies. Doing all his toes. These are just curved lines right there on the very end. Perfect. And they actually have webbing in between their toes, so we'll draw that too. So again, another curved line right here. See the webbing in the feet. We'll do this one right back here too. Bam. Bam, bam, bam. Um, and remember I told you the spinities, I guess? Spi 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 I don't know, spinities? Um, we're gonna actually kind of draw a couple of lines to help us lay those out. We'll lay, we'll, we will most likely be painting those. Um, for bonus, at the end of the video, I'm gonna do some charcoal with this one. That is not required, but um, I think this one is gonna look neat with some charcoal. So once we've done the watercolor, if you hang tight for the end of the video, I'll show you how to add some charcoal highlights, but it's definitely not required. Um, okay, so we need to draw a couple lines. So I'm gonna draw, so you know, these two lines right here that kind of help helped us create where those spinities are going to lay. I need to draw just one more, just one more, and it's just going to kind of sandwich right in between those ones that I've done. Um, nothing particularly special. Uh, but then we need to draw some cross hatches. Now, the body of a gator is not flat. It is rounded. So these hat these these lines are going to have a curve to them to kind of match the body of the gator. So I'm going to go right here and I'm gonna go pretty pretty equally distanced. It's gonna go all the way up to the top. And I'm gonna draw some curved lines. These do not have to be perfect, um, partially because we will, um, we're, we're actually, we'll erase some of these here in a second. So, and then that is gonna continue all the way up the tail right here. And as they go back, they get kind of closer together. They get closer together. Um, all right, we, we're actually, we're, we're, we're getting there, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a couple of more details to add, and then we'll work on the background. So a couple of more things to add. One, we need to add some more teeth. Add some more teeth. I'm just going through and adding some small ones in between those big ones that I made. Okay, bam, bam, bam. Let's do a couple big ones back here. Bam, bam, bam. Um, alligators have this kind of big gullet right here, so I'm gonna add a couple of lines to show that kind of chonky neck that they have. Um, I'm also gonna show they have kind of wrinkles and stuff in their gums and in their mouth. So for to draw those, I'm just gonna do like kind of their, their curved lines that kind of come up out of the lip, right? And I'll just pick a few spots to add some of those to make them look a little more mean right here. Right 
here. Let's do one here, one here, one here, one here. Okay, hey, that's looking pretty, pretty good. Uh, this looks good right here, that looks good. Um, they all stay will add just a few lines that we'll see back behind the watercolor to give it a little bit more realism so they've got kind of these scale patterns on their legs so i'm going to draw they're just this is just curved lines y'all just curved lines that kind of that kind of show that um i'll draw some wrinkles on their feet okay wrinkles on their feet um a couple more curved lines right here to kind of show this big kind of this bend right here um we've got we need to draw the armpit line right here and then here's the belly so this is just kind of like a little i don't know an extension of the arm some some tissue here right back here same thing so let's add some lines right here to our hind leg and we've got some lines here and this is just flavor right here. This is just flavor to make our crocodile. I keep wanting to call it an alligator, but it is a, definitely a crocodile. Right here, here, boom. Um, and then along the back, so those spinities, what we're gonna do for right now is we're just gonna kind of lay them out. And all they are, do you see these spaces in between? They are ovals okay they are ovals so if you will just kind of set like a pancake it's like a pancake sitting on top of a shelf right so then you'll do the same thing on this row pancake sitting on top of a shelf pancake 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 and they'll get pretty close together as you move down the tail and that's it's supposed to it's supposed to be that way and i'm actually going to leave all most of these lines i'll go through and erase a couple of them um because they actually lend themselves, even though they're mostly guides, they lend themselves well to helping us later on. Okay, so we got more right here. Draw our pancakes sitting on a shelf. Bam, 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 bam. All the way back in that tail. Bam, bam, bam. We have right here our leg. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Let's draw a couple of, a couple of lines right here on the tail. So this is actually the bottom of the tail. There's our, our back leg. Whoop. All right. Hey, I'm kind of happy with this. I think it looks good. Um, you can always go even more intensely with the with the detail. Uh, I mean, you can you can go for days, you know, adding different lines and wrinkles and folds and and creases and and all kinds of stuff. You could just go and go and go. Uh, but for this project, I'm I'm pretty happy with the crocodile. So we're gonna add um, we're gonna add some background. To this, to this right now, some plants from its original um, original habitat, uh, and then we're gonna start watercoloring. So let's 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 dig in. For the background, I've decided we're gonna do kind of like he's entering the water. So there will be a strip of blue right down here, which will paint like water. Um, we'll have a strip right here that's kind of the dirt of the bank. And then the rest of this up here will be green just to kind of show grass. So we're not gonna do a ton of detail in the back, um, but we do need to kind of block out where those colors are gonna go. So I want it to look almost like this paw or this claw or foot or whatever you want to call it is just just coming into the water. So I'm going to draw kind of a broken line. Not perfect and in fact it kind of as it goes because if you think about a shoreline they're they're not they're not perfectly straight. They've got bumps and ridges and, and all kinds of stuff. And then right up here, I'm gonna do the same thing. So it's kind of like, not quite as high as I just showed, but there's like gonna be a strip of dirt almost that's just the just the water bank. So I'm gonna do this one really, really lightly um, because I don't want it to show up uh, behind the paint very predominantly. So on this one, I'm gonna make it even more broken. I don't know if you hear, I can do that a little darker right here and that's going to go and then it's like right over here okay right over here so again that's going to be the dirt or the shoreline and then this rest of this part up here we're going to make we're going to paint like look some grass okay so grab your watercolor set and uh now we're going to start coloring this big baddie
Let's do this. Got my watercolor set. It's off here, off to the side. Got my water, got paper towel, got my brush. Um, so we're gonna have to do this one in stages because the gator, we're gonna we're gonna do some watercolor layering, okay? Watercolor layering. So you got a couple of options. You can let them dry, air dry, or you can, um, in between the layers, you can use a hair dryer. I caution you on the hair dryer, although I do use it and a lot of artists do. If you have a, like a whole bunch of water on your paper and you blast it on high with a with a hair dryer, it's gonna it's make, gonna make that paint kind of explode all over the place. So make sure if you do dry it in between um, in between the different layers with a hairdryer that you're careful start with it pulled way way back and then you can adjust as as you need to all right let's um we're gonna mix some green so i have my water watercolor tray right here uh just just my eight colors we don't need anything super fancy i I'm, I'm going to put on my palette i'm going to put green yellow and brown green yellow and brown so if you remember on the on the on the pan or the cake watercolors you're going to need to add a little bit of water to the top to kind of rehydrate it um, these sets that i provided if you've got one of my sets it doesn't take very long at all for that to to get a little water and to get the paint going um, if you have your own set sometimes it can take i don't know 20 or 30 minutes or so but i put a little just a little bit of water on here and once it's ready to go i painted with mine yesterday so it's not going to take any time at all remember never go from straight from watercolor to paper watercolor to paper don't that's that's a bad idea you want to go from palette to paper so i'm going to go ahead and make my puddles my puddles right here and again to make my puddle i'm just kind of wiggling my brush right on top and then making a puddle over here on the side okay just wiggle 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 right over here wiggle 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 well, rinse your brush and then you're going to do the same thing for yellow and brown so I'm going to get some yellow Bam. here okay here and then we need brown I need to move my water okay so on this one, we need to move kind of fast uh, because our base layer, we're actually going to blend all three of these colors to get to get us going on our base layer. So if you want to watch this next part before, I'm going to move this over here, my water, so you don't have to see my arm in the shot over and over and over again. Um, you, uh, if you want to watch this part and then come back and do it, you know, rewind it and do it again, that's what I would recommend. Just so you can kind of see where the colors are going because we got to book it. We got to book it. Okay. First, I'm going to mix. Do you see the space in between my yellow and brown? I'm going to kind of pull that together and it's going to make a tan color. Okay. So yellow and brown, when they're mixed together, make a really nice tan. Um, you can adjust the color of your tan by adding a little more yellow. If you want it to be a little more yellow or a little more brown, if you want it to be closer to brown, but I like just what I've got. So we're going to paint the lips, the belly, and part of the leg and back here under the tail with that color. So you're gonna need quite a bit. So make sure that you've got a good amount of brown, a good amount of yellow. That way we can we can rock it and roll it. So I'm going to paint the head first, right? The head first. So that tan color is like I said, it's gonna go around the lips, the belly, a parts of the leg and the back of the tail. Above that, we're going to do a green and brown mixture. So if you want to go ahead and get that started too, uh, you can. So I'm going to, I'm just going to make a another small little puddle right up here of brown. That way I don't have to drag my brush back and forth. And just like I did with the yellow, I'm going to kind of mix those two together. Now the brown will very quickly overpower your green color. Um, so just make sure that you're very careful when you're mixing it. You don't want a super, super brown color. All right. Let's do it to it. So I've got a pretty good amount of water on my brush. It's not dripping wet, but it does have water on there. And I'm gonna go straight into that tan color and I'm gonna get started. So I'm gonna paint, paint a line right along the lips, right here. Just like so. And then I need to move kind of quickly, okay, especially right up here, 
because I want that color to blend with my green and brown mixture. So I'm gonna take my green and brown mixture and I'm gonna paint all the way up here. Don't paint inside your eye. We wanna leave that white, okay? Don't paint inside your eye. But I'm gonna paint all the way up here, adding a little bit of water, roughing it up between those, between those two colors, yeah? So right where those colors meet, just kinda of gently taking my brush and kinda of scrubbing them together. I'm gonna continue that up here. I'm not painting my eyeball. There we go. So you see what I mean about having to go fast? If we didn't move fast, then we wouldn't have been able to blend those colors. So I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna go back into the brown and tan color. And now I'm gonna do this part right here. I'm working in segments so it doesn't dry. I'm gonna do this neck part right here and the leg, okay? The neck and the leg. So I've got my, I'm, I'm working with that brown and yellow color right here. And I'm gonna get it going. So right here. A little darker. If it's a little darker, that's fine. Just add a little bit of water. A little bit of water. And I'm gonna paint this whole area right here, this brown color. And then a portion of the foot right here. Okay? Portion of the foot, just a little. And now I'm going to quickly go into my green and brown color and meet it up. So I need to add a little bit of water. Do you see the color difference? If I had just a little bit of water, bada bing, bada boom. It, it remedies, it fixes it. Watercolor loves water. I'm gonna continue it right down here. Just again, right where those colors meet, just kind of scrubbing it a little, helping them get to know each other. And then right down here too. So again, this is the green and brown color. Just a little bit of green, a little bit of brown. <coughs> Excuse me. A little bit of green, a little bit of brown. <coughs> Man, I cannot kick this cough, y'all. It's killing me. Killing me, killing me. All right, because I told you we got to move fast. We got to move fast. So we've got kind of the arm done right here. We've got some of the green going up the back. Um, now we need to do the belly, and the belly is going to be that golden color, that tan color. That's the brown. That's the brown and the um, oh, brown and the yellow. All right, Whew, man, I just lost lost my words. So let me get a little bit on there, right here on the belly. I don't know, a pretty good strip. All I hear when I hear belly is belly, belly, belly screen from Team Umi, Team Umizoomi. I don't know if any of you have little siblings who watch Team Umizoomi, but my daughter really likes it right now. And then just like we added a little bit on this leg, we're going to add some right back here. There's going to be a little more on these back legs. A little more on these back legs. In fact, we're going to paint most of this back leg right here, this, this, this kind of brown color up here. Okay. And then we got to quickly, because I want to blend this all together. In fact, I'm going to add just a little bit of water to help it. Then we're going to quickly add our green and brown. And if you can see, I've just kind of, that's just become one pile now. So I'm going to add it. Might need a little water on my brush right here. And just right where those colors meet, just kind of gently help them get acquainted. And all of the rest of this is going to be that green color. Okay, so you can just kind of fill it in. You can just fill it in right here. You might need to mix a little more. In fact, I do to get it to get it going. Okay. Oh, I lied. We need to add a little bit back here. I said that early on, and then I didn't do it. Okay. Right here. We'll, we'll finish this right up here since I want that to blend together. Okay right where those colors meet, just kind of gently. I'm pressing very, very lightly. I'm, I'm hardly, it's like, as Bob Ross says, two hairs and some air. Not very hard whenever I'm trying to blend those two, when those two colors together. There we go. Right here. Get this back leg. Back leg doing right here. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and finish my green color and then I'll go back in right here and add a little bit of a, uh, too dark, too dark. That yellow color right in here. So I'm gonna do that. 
Oop, I was being sloppy. Okay, now I'm gonna very quickly add, you see this white spot I left? I'm gonna add that tan color right here. And then just kind of blend it together using my brush, just gently, gently scrubbing it together. And one last thing we forgot in that golden color right up here, my bad y'all, my bad. You see this little webbing right here in the mouth? That's the golden color too. Okie dokie, we have our base layer for our crocodile done. Um, now, we need to let this dry before we add any more layers, but we can go ahead and add the water right here, just, just, you know, just to keep it moving. So I'm going to wipe out my tray, wipe out my tray. I don't need brown. I will need brown again, but I don't need it right now. Wipe out my tray, okay? Uh, now we're going to get a little bit of blue, a little bit of green, all right, a little bit of blue, a little bit of green for our water. The reason I cleared out that green a minute ago is because it had too much brown in it. And for the water, we don't want that much, um, we don't want that much brown. So get a little bit of blue, a little bit of green. And the water, we're gonna do a bunch of those, blo that bloom technique where you add, um, where you add water on t just just plain old non paint filled water on top of your color okay right here get a bunch and then i'm going to mix i'm going to mix you know how we've kind of mixed two puddles together but not mix the whole puddle i'm going to do the same thing cuz i want a little bit of a like a turquoise color too cuz water you know bounces around and plays and ha and has a whole bunch of greens and blues in it so i want to kind of mimic that um, now, the deal with the water is not, it's not super complicated. I mean, it's not a, like a really difficult technique. We're just going to apply it quickly. Um, we have to do the bloom portion fast because we want it to still be wet. So you might, uh, I'm going to speed this part up. I'll do a little bit, but then speed it up because it's going to take me a minute. Um, but if you see me kind of doing this, that's adding the blooms. And those blooms, you'll see here in a second, create a really neat effect that make it appear kind of wet like water. Uh, so I just kind of alternate color. So I'll put a little bit of water down and actually my water is so green that <laughs> my brush uh, had like dirty water on it which is fine and then I'll put a little bit of green and I'll put a little bit of blue and then I'll put a little bit of the turquoise color just kind of alternating and then I'll put just a little bit of plain water to kind of make mix it around and I'm gonna repeat that process all the way down here in this water strip okay All right, we've got the water done. We're gonna skip the dirt layer for right now because the water is still drying and I don't want those colors necessarily to bleed into our water layer. So we're gonna paint this area back here. Um, I'm actually gonna keep this blue green that I have, but I also want a little bit of yellow, a little bit of just regular green, um, and then just a little bit of brown, okay? Because we're this is gonna kind of be like a fuzzy background with some grass that we're gonna paint over it. So so we just kind of want to give the indication that that there's some that there's some plant action happening. So I'm going to keep that 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 blue that I have. I'm going to add a little bit of green, little bit of yellow, and then a little bit of brown. Okay, a little bit of brown. And I'm going to end up probably mixing most of these together. I'm going to speed this part up because it's going to take me a minute. Um, and actually, no, I'm going to use a large brush to do it quickly, very, very quickly, um, so I don't have to speed it up. Uh, I'd also like to show you a, a nice watercolor brush. So this is a watercolor brush that it's just the Master's Touch brand that you can get from Hobby Lobby. Um, whenever you're doing watercolor paint, you really want to use a brush that's specifically designed for watercolor. I, I mean, at the end of the day, you can use anything you'd like, but watercolor brushes are meant to hold the water and the bristles, and they just they they just work better because they're they're the right tool for the right job. Um, 
So I'm going to use this big old honking brush. Uh, you, you know, if I were working at home, I would I never hardly use just one brush. I usually use a combination of three or four, just for those of you who you know who enjoy doing this and might want to might want to improve your skills a little bit. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and fill this background in. So I got to get this brush wet because I haven't used it yet today. And I'm going to start just very similar to how I did the water. I'm going to use a combination of these blues and greens um, and yellows and, and browns to just kind of fill in back here to, to, again, not to paint like real detail, but to just kind of show that there are, you know, there's some plants happening back there. So I'm going to start with a little bit of just plain old water. I'll do the green. I'll do a little bit of brown. little bit of just regular old green then I'll do some lime green just letting them mix not super worried about you know how the colors lay or anything like that just getting some getting some color on the page right here kind of swirling it around a little bit dark mix it up a little Oop, I need a little more green on my palette I'm out I'm out I'm out Ooh, I gotta go over here see that little green little green nuggy right here there. add a couple of brown and then lighten it up a little with some water uh, let's do a little bit of that bright lime green over here, too. Mm. I want this layer to be kind of light uh, because I'm going to be painting over the top of it with some grass-like textures here once it's dry and once we've done a couple of other things. Uh, so I don't want it super dark. You don't want to make it super dark. And just kind of swirl it around. Let's do some of that blue-green color right up here. Yeah, there we go. That brown is almost looking red on the camera. Here, let's make a nice muddy green color. I like that green. I'll spread it around up here. See what I mean? Told you that I'd probably end up just. Oh, I like that. I wish I had done a little bit of that color. In fact, I'm going to over here. Yeah. You can add some blooms if you want. That's just water. Kind of gives it a. See right here? See how it's forming already? Very, very cool. I love doing it. You can't, absolutely cannot necessarily, you cannot control it. That's why I love it. It's chaotic. Here we go. Finish that over here. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Bada bing. Bada bing. All right. Now, now I'm to the point where I have to let it dry because my water is still not dry. This back here, I just painted, so obviously you can even see it glistening in the in the fluorescent light. Um, I have to let it dry so I can paint this middle section. So if you're using your hair dryer, just be careful. Uh, if you're letting it air dry, go read a book, go take a walk, uh, and then come back. So I've got to let mine dry before I can add any more. Um, the next colors we're going to do the earth right here. Um, and so for the earth, we need green and brown and yellow. We're going to mix that together together to kind of make to kind of make a dirt color. All right. So I'm gonna let it dry. All right, we are dry. So let's go ahead and paint the dirt. Um, and then we're going to go in and add a couple of layers to the crocodile to make it look a little more realistic. And then we'll do the grass in the background. Um, so for the dirt, again, we are going to need, let me use my little brush for this one. We're going to need brown. Mostly brown. Wee bit of yellow. Right here. And then just a touch of green, a hint, sorry, you can't see my palette, 
hint of green, just like we did with the water. And then this back here, we're just going to kind of quickly block some of the color, um, alternating between green and brown. And I'll actually mix this green into this brown to make a green brown color. And then I'll mix a little of this right here. Okay, we're looking for dirt. We're looking for dirt. So I'm going to add a little water to get the party started. And then I'll start laying in my dirt. So we're looking mostly for brown, okay? Mostly for brown. But if it has a little bit of green, a little bit of yellow in there, it's that's more realistic. I would say the hardest part about this one is painting between all of these teeth. Uh, painting between all of these teeth. All right, the earth is done. The earth is done. So we do need to let this layer dry as well because we're about to add a little bit to the gator. Um, but we can do the inside of the mouth right now, um, which we have left blank, because it is going to require a little bit of red, a little bit of red to get that kind of the pink inside the mouth. So while our dirt, <coughs> excuse me, is drying, I'm gonna wipe out my palette all that and I need a little bit of red and a little bit of brown a little bit of red so I haven't used red so I'm in a little bit of water you might need to let it chill for a second um, for it to kind of wake up but I'm gonna put a little bit of red on my palette a little bit of red and then a little bit of brown I mean just like a tiny tiny bit what the what the brown does is the brown, um, the brown kind of dulls the red a little bit to make it not quite so bright. So I'm going to take my brush, I'm going to kind of mix that brown in with that red, make it a little dustier, and then I'm going to paint this kind of light pink that it's turned out to be inside the mouth. And just try not to paint over all my teeth. And this color is just a little bit of red and a little bit of brown mixed together. And the brown just kind of serves to dull the red a little bit. So it's not quite like a cherry red. Right here. Way back in here. And actually I'll want it a little darker back here in the back of the mouth kind of make it look a little more realistic there we go all right so we're gonna let that dry um so we need to let the earth dry because we're gonna add um, at, uh, at least one, we'll add one more layer to the crocodile and then we'll add some grass in the background. And then a bonus at the end of the video is how to add some charcoal highlights. I really like using charcoal and watercolor, but it is not a requirement for this video. So once you finish the watercolor portion, you do not have to do the charcoal, but I, I am gonna show some of you who I think are interested. So let it dry. Um, and then we're going to add some color to the gator. So the gator we're going to need green, yellow, um, brown, and just a touch, like a little bit of black to kind of darken up some of those colors, all right? Let's add some detail to our crocodile. As you can see over here on my palette, I have prepared a little bit of black, brown, green, yellow, and then a little more, oops, stuck my, <laughs> stuck my finger in it, <laughs> a little more brown. Uh, the reason I put two piles of puddles of brown is because I'm gonna mix this yellow and this brown together. I'm gonna mix this green and this brown together. So it just kind of logistically made sense to make two. That way, I don't, again, I don't have to drag my paintbrush back and forth. All right, so all we're really gonna do is add a little bit of, uh, like a little bit of depth by adding some darkness. So these colors should be darker than the color that we have on our crocodile okay this right here what we're doing right now is layering i mean we're putting we put one layer down then we're going to do another this is what sets watercolor painting apart from just an average old student painting to somebody who's serious right it kind of elevates it up 
Uh, so we're gonna start with our green and our brown, and I'm gonna mix kind of like I've done several times. I'm gonna mix those colors up, and you want it to be a little more green. So like on mine, if you notice, that completely ate up all of my green. Um, that shouldn't be a problem. I, do, I don't believe that we're gonna need pure green, but if we do, we can just add a little on there. So what we're gonna do with this color is, we're gonna kind of go over some of these spots to add a little bit of depth. First, we're gonna start around the eye. The eye is a little bit dark, right around where the eye cavity is, is a little bit darker than the rest because it's set into the skull. So I've got my, my nice dark color here, and I'm gonna start adding a little bit of that dark color right along the eye, right along the eye. And it is very dark, very, very dark. I'm gonna add a little bit of water just to kind of blend it out a little, right? So I put that color down, and then I added a little bit of water to blend it out, just like that. Okay, see right away, do you see that really lovely, how dark that is and how it, it's really making that eye pop? I'm gonna do the same thing right back here. So I'm gonna add a little bit of dark color right on the top of this back eye, okay? Add a little bit of water, just plain old water to blend it down. There we go. All right, let's do the nose. Same thing. So we're going to do it nice and dark right around the nose. Then we're going to add a little bit of water to blend it out. Right along here where the jaw kind of meets the head, let's add a little bit of dark color too. Add a little bit of water. Kind of spread it around. Now, we're gonna add a pretty good amount of dark color right here because it's, it's the fold of the elbow. So that skin's kind of tucked up under there. So I'm gonna go right in here with that dark and I'm gonna paint a pretty good amount of it before I add my water, right? Just like here. Then I'll add a little bit of water. blend and let's add some dark right here right here and along the toes so I've got that same this is that green and the brown color mixed together add a little here add a little bit of water see already just in this half look at the difference between up here and back here right just these few extra steps really set the art apart. And then we've got to add a little bit of dark right around the toes, you know, because the toes kind of overlay and create some shadow. Add the color and then add a little bit of water right over the top to blend it, okay? Now, this is probably the most time consuming part of this step. So all of these little, remember the pancakes on a shelf? All of those are technically little raised bumps. So underneath them, you'll see you'll see a shadow, right? I mean, you're gonna see a little bit of shading where the, where the sun doesn't quite get to them. So I'm gonna take that same color, that same green color, and right underneath all of those spinities, I'm gonna add some of that dark color, okay? Some of that dark color. And you may have to do a little bit at a time, but you do wanna do the same thing. You do wanna add a little bit of water to help blend it in, okay? So right underneath those spines, add a little bit of that dark color. And this is just that green and that brown. Okay. Right here. Ooh, I need to mix a little more. Adding a little bit of water if it's a little dark. Right here. And actually, I'm gonna add a little bit on the top too, just, just to give it a little definition. Oh yeah, do you see how that made it pop right out? Perfect. Do it along all of these. The ones you really need to focus on are the ones right back here on the back. Um, the ones along the tail, I mean, they, they, they get really, really, really close together. Um, and so you lose a little bit as you go down the tail. But these ones right here on the back are nice and big. 
And again, you'll notice I'm just, sometimes I'm just going straight with water. I don't even put, have any paint on my brush. I just have a little bit of water. Let's darken this up a little back here. Water, right here. Yeah, all right. Let's continue this kind of up here. So as you move up the tail, it becomes less important that each of the pancakes is outlined. More about just kind of giving the indication that it's happening, indication that it's happening. So we'll add a few right here. Kind of make it good. All right, and this back leg back here, it's gonna be pretty dark. It's gonna be pretty dark because it's all the way back, all the way back behind. I didn't mix nearly enough of that color, y'all. It's gonna be back behind, so it's gonna be pretty dark right here paint half I painted half of it with the paint and then the rest of it I'm just gonna with a little bit of water on my brush I'm just gonna push it and you'll notice it that creates a really really nice fade a really nice fade all right let's do this back leg right here so same thing with the front leg all of the folds right are gonna be dark or darker so that fold right along there is going to be a little darker. A lot, a little bit of darkness right here where that leg kind of meets with the body. Yeah, there we go. And then let's add, we need to add a little bit because we've done all of this really nice layering. We need to make sure that we do it up the tail too. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that dark color right along the tail and then take some water and just kind of continue it up. Doesn't need to be as dark as some of the parts right down here, but you do need to still see it stand out. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, uh, that's gonna be good for the dark green. Now we need to do some dark brown to fill in the belly, to fill in the belly. All right, so for the dark brown, I'm gonna mix yellow and brown together. I know that I need more paint than I have on there. See, Miss Hall does learn from her mistake. Oop, stuck it right in the blue, dang it. And this is where we're gonna add a little, a little bit of black. I mean, just start with a very, very small amount, y'all. I cannot, I cannot tell you enough. I mean, I guess at the, at the very worst, you might have to wipe your palette, but a little bit of black goes a very, 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 very long way. So I have made a darker brown. That is just mixing the brown. See that? Look at what, look what I did right there. Ugh. A little bit of brown, or a lot of brown, a little bit of yellow, a tiny bit of black to get this dark color. And we're going to go right along where all of the shadows should, should be. So right on the belly, right where it touches that ground. I'm going to put that brown color that I just made. That is mostly brown it does have a little bit of yellow and it does have a little bit of black so i put the color down and then i'm going to take my brush with a little bit of water and i'm going to blend it around right like so and let's do it a couple more spots so right under here right under the jaw in this like neck area we need a little bit of a little bit of brown uh, oh, right, right, right back here on this back leg. We definitely need some. I'm going to make this kind of dark right here on the toes, too. So I put the paint down, and I'm going to add some water. Like that. And then right along the mouth. Right along the mouth. So this one, I'll do uh, kind of a dark, dark strip right here on the bottom jaw. And then I'll blend it with just water, just water, just water. And then I'll do the same thing right here, making sure that I get this little webbed area right here, okay? Just move it around, just water. Blend it together. Just eyeball it anywhere you think that it needs a little bit of, a little bit of love, you can add it. Hey, I'm happy with that. Uh, let's add a little bit back here on the tail. Back here on the tail. Right here. Okay. 
Add it a little bit, and now I'm just going in with water, pushing it around. I think we are just about done. Let's make this mouth a little darker too so it matches because we've got all these layers happening on the back of the gator, but the mouth is still just kind of this plain old red. So I'm gonna put, do you see this puddle right here? That's my yellow, brown, and a little bit of black. I'm gonna drop in, I just have a little bit of red on my brush. I'm gonna drop it in right in the middle to make a really, like a, like a muddy red color. It's like a red brown color. <coughs> excuse me, excuse me. And I'm going to start with that right in the back of the mouth. Yeah, see, right away. And then with my, just water, just water, I'm going to blend that around. Being careful about my teeth. Being careful about my teeth. Let's put a little bit under here. Perfect. Awesome, 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 awesome. Oh, I forgot about the eyeball. The eyeball needs to be yellow. It needs to be yellow. So I'm just gonna put an itty bitty, 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 bitty bit of yellow on my palette. Paint that eyeball yellow. Bam, all right, yeah, y'all. I am liking this. Um, okay, we need to let the gator dry. I know it's mostly dry, but there's some spots in the tail. We need to let the gator dry. Our final painting part of this is about to come up. I'm gonna show you how to do quick little flicks of grass in the background. And then again, at the end is a bonus for charcoal. Not required, um, but just, just a little flavor if you, if you wanna add it. So let's let them dry, and then we'll do the background. All right, it's dry. Let's do some grass. Let's do some like, big, long, tall grass right down here, right in the back, okay? Um, for this, we're gonna need green and brown, and then also just some plain green, and then a little bit of yellow. Little bit of yellow. Maybe I'll say it one more time, little bit of yellow. There we go. Uh, this is super, super easy, guys, how to do this. So I'm gonna take my brush, and I'm gonna alternate between my colors, and this is gonna be a wet on dry, because we're painting on a dry, dry background, and with my small brush, I'm just gonna alternate between these colors, and I'm gonna do a motion like this. Okay, it's essentially a flick, a flick and a twist. So I'm gonna go all the way throughout the background, adding this grass texture, okay? I'll speed it up, but again, I'm just alternating between the colors I have on my palette. I'll do a little of the green, and then I'll do a little of the lime green, and then I'll do this dark brown green color up here, and I'm just overlapping them, making these little wispy kind of shapes in the back, okay? All right, uh, you know, I'm happy with this. I think I could go on and on and on and on and add the, uh, like this this stuff in the background all day long. Um, but I, I think it, I think it's a good, it looks pretty good. You can get to a point where there's too much and then you don't see the kind of in individual texture. Um, so for the assignment, this is the stopping point. Um, this is all you have to upload. But if you want to see how I combine um, watercolor with charcoal, then stay on the line. Um, I'm just using the charcoal pencil that was actually that I provided in my art kits. It, it doesn't really matter what type of charcoal pencil you have for this next spot. But again, this next part is not required. The painting, if you are to this step, then you are done with this assignment. This next step is just some extra flavor. Um, but I have to let it dry. So I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to go in and add some charcoal highlights. Low lights, charcoal low lights. God, it's dark. Ugh. All right, this last part of the video is just for a little flavor. Um, so you do not have to do these steps, 
but we're going to add a little bit of charcoal to our alligator to really, 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 really pump it up. But again, this is not required for the assignment. This is just if you would like. And I am using, um, <coughs> excuse me, a soft charcoal pencil. If you have my art kit, this is the pencil that was included. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're just essentially gonna, gonna kinda go through and accentuate some of the parts that we have already added the added some of our dark watercolor to. We're gonna start top to bottom. That way we're not sitting, in, you know, if we started bottom and then worked up, our hand would be sitting in all of our charcoal right down here. We don't want it because some of you probably know charcoal is messy. It's dusty, it's a lot like chalk, okay? Um, I have a paper towel off to the side. This is my watercolor paper towel. Some people, when they blend charcoals, um, they will use a paper towel. Some people just use just their plain old finger uh, with nothing, nothing else. Really, it's up to you what you'd like to do. All right, so let's start by adding a couple of hatching and like some cross hatching. So right up here on the tail, I'm gonna take my charcoal pencil and I'm gonna kind of outline my gator, okay? I'm doing like a rough outline. You can see it's kind of a broken. And right where I added some of those, um, some of those pencil marks early, early, early on, I'm gonna go through and add a little bit of charcoal too to kind of darken it up. Just a few little hatches. Then I'm gonna do cross hatches. So hatching and cross hatching is a method to add, um, to add a little bit of value, a little bit of shading just like that. And then I'm gonna use just my finger to kind of blend it out a little bit, just a little. Perfect, just like that. So let's go right along here on the top of the tail. So I'm just doing an outline right now to kind of help help it stand out. Um, and then I'm gonna go along, do you see the, the little spinities? Right underneath those, the pancakes on a shelf from way, way back in the video, I'm gonna add a little bit of charcoal right underneath them to show, to, to make them stand out a little bit more, to show that shadow. I'm also gonna do it right along this line, okay, this line, because remember, this is kind of like a raised ridge uh, along the back. So I'm gonna go through just adding, I'm not completely circling them, but I am adding a little bit of charcoal right along that ridge. Let's do it on top too. I'm gonna blend it a little right here. Let's go around here. So just kind of outline the bottom right here. Okay, just like that. Outline, blending it as I go right here. And all right, now we're down to the bigger ones. So I'll add a little bit. Outline right here, blend it right here. Okay, I'm not gonna continue down because I wanna do, I wanna do a little bit up here and then a little bit right along here around the, around the rear. So this leg back here, I'm gonna do kind of an outline just to get it a little bit of definition. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of charcoal right here where just to kind of help that dark green paint that I have. And I'm just pressing really lightly and then I'll outline right along the body right here, okay? Blend it a little. So you can see the charcoal just kind of helps accentuate what we've already done, all right? So I'm gonna go right back here on the, ba the base of the tail, add a little bit of charcoal just to give some definition. Blend it a little. Right here. Add a little more up here. It'll be kind of dark down up here. Boom, boom, boom. Um, let's go ahead and um, now we're gonna work side to side. So I'm gonna go the head and then we'll end up over here on our leg. So the head, the first thing I wanna do is add a little bit of charcoal right around the eye to make the eye stand out. So I'm just kind of doing an outline right now, adding a little bit to go over these pencil lines that I can still see. But right in through here, now I'm gonna start adding a little bit more little bit more right around the eye. This eyelid right up here is a little dark. This line continues down all the way to the nose. Okay, really gently. I'll blend it a little. Right here. 
this line right here, we can't forget that one. Add a little bit. Right. And then we're gonna outline this top part just to give it a little more definition. And now just a little bit. See, I'm lightly, 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 lightly adding some charcoal right along the top. And then I'm gonna blend it right there. We need to add a little bit more around the eye. I'm gonna make that lid really, really dark. That way it stands out, just like that. Let's add some hatches right here, just to kind of show some of the scaly scales that we didn't draw. These are just short little lines that I'm doing, just to kind of show some texture. Let's do some up here too. Okay, just to show a little bit of texture on our gator head. Uh, and then we're gonna go right down here, so I'm gonna outline the top. Don't forget our nose. The nose is nice and dark and the nostrils nice and dark. And there's a little bit of shading right down here on the end of the nose. All right. Just lightly, 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 and then you can blend it together. Uh, and now we're gonna we're gonna outline the mouth, right? The lip. So right here, those little lines that we added, I'm just going over those in charcoal. Just going over those in charcoal. I'm not pressing very hard. Just kind of light. And then I'm gonna go and add just a little, very, very lightly. Add a little bit, then we'll blend it. See how it, how it kind of accentuates the detail that we already added. Love it. Uh, this webbing right here, so we're gonna continue this line right here. I'm just tracing over these lines right now. Um, this webbing is a little darker right along the top. And then as it fades down to the bottom of the mouth, it's not quite as dark. Okay, oop, I forgot this part of the lip right here. All right, boom, boom, boom. Now we're gonna do along the bottom. So I'm just tracing right now over those lines, that pencil lines that I already drew, just tracing over them. Okay, tracing over them. So I'm just going over that. All I did right there was just go over the lines I already had. Let's go ahead and um, do the teeth. Now I'm gonna sharpen my pencil for the teeth because it's become a little bit dull. Um, charcoals are really, really, really soft. So when you sharpen them, just be careful, go slow. Otherwise you're gonna snap off that very, very end. Just slow, there we go. And I'm just gonna trace over the teeth with a nice sharp point. I'm not gonna do anything else to them because I want them to mostly still stay white, right? The ones that I didn't accidentally paint over. I want them to still stay white, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be blending those, and then I need to complete the mouth right back there, just tracing over the pencil. Right now I'm just tracing over those teeth that I already drew, just making them a little bit darker. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, we want this back part of the mouth to be darker because, you know, as you go into the belly of the beast, <laughs> there's no light, right? So, take my charcoal and I'm just gonna very, very, very lightly add in a little bit of charcoal. I'm gonna carefully blend it, avoiding my teeth. I don't wanna get all my teeth in there but just something like that. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, let's add just a little bit down here. We just traced it. So I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna very lightly, I'm kind of doing like a check mark motion with my charcoal. Okay, a check mark motion. This right under here, right under this jawline will be a little darker. So I'm gonna make that, I'm gonna kind of expand that line out a little bit. Right here, this one I am gonna blend. It's especially dark right underneath the belly, right on the neck right here. Let's blend some of this too. And when I blend, I'm very, very, very lightly pushing. I'm not really like scrubbing in, scrubbing into the to the drawing. Okay, right here. Um, all right, let's work right up here because again, I don't want to I don't want to be drawn up here with all of this done. So just like we were doing on the tail, underneath our pancakes on a shelf. 
just add a little bit of charcoal. It's gonna help it help those, those light spots that we kind of left unpainted stand out. Glue on the top. Just very lightly, kind of going over some of those lines. I'm gonna shade this one up. Okay, there we go. So just added a little bit underneath those light parts. Um, whenever you put a really light and a really dark next to each other, they both help define each other. Uh, <coughs> so that's why we did that right up there. All right, let's add some shading to the belly and the leg. And then just a couple of quick little marks um, along the bank and the, the grass, and then we'll be good to go. So the leg is really dark right here just like we use the dark paint. So using a kind of swooping motion, I'm gonna add quite a bit of charcoal right here on this part of the leg because it's like kind of tucked underneath. Um, right here, I'm gonna trace the belly and this elbow part, right? Trace it. So you should have a few lines right here. So I'm just gonna go back over some of those lines that I made with charcoal, make that one really dark, okay? Let's go over the toes. I'm just tracing, just tracing. Add the nails, the webbing. And then I'm gonna add some like, I don't know, again, just kind of like curved lines along the toes to kind of show the scaly little bit hand, the scaly hand. go. All right. We're cooking. We're cooking. We're cooking. We're cooking. Um, so let's do the belly. Belly, same thing. So I'm going to do these kind of big, big swoops, right? Because it's curved. The belly is curved. I'm going to trace it a little bit. Just kind of big just like that. And actually for the belly, we're going to add some cross hatching. So we're just gonna go perpendicular to what we drew and add a little bit of cross hatching. That kind of helps us show, so show some of the scales that we left out. Finally, on our gator, we're gonna outline this back leg. So just go over the pencil that you've already drawn. Get the toes. So right now I am just tracing, just tracing just tracing. Um, and now I'm going to add some, just like I did over here, some kind of swoopy swoops. So right here, these go this way because it's the front of the knee. Just doing a, like a little check mark, a little swoopy swoop mark. This back here will be a little darker under the fold. And then this right here will be a little darker too. Gently blend it. Let's add some marks to the toes like we did to the ones up front. And let's add just a little bit of flavor right here. Okie dokie, our gator has been char cold. Um, you can go through and add, I mean, if you see a spot that you think needs a little more loving, a little more, um, a little more shadow in yours, then go ahead and add it. Um, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me, for the ground. I'm just gonna add kind of some broken, jaggedy lines, right? I'll go along the, the bank, you know, I'll do a couple up here, a few over here, just to kind of show, you know, that there's some dirt and there's some spots in the ground where light is catching and where it's not. And I'll do the same thing up here in the grass. So I'll just do some kind of big, I'm just shoo, shoo, kind of these curved lines to mimic what I've already done. Not going to add a ton. I don't want it to get too busy. And that is pretty finished. Yeah. All right. So if you watched through this far, I hope that you did try the charcoal. Um, we haven't really done anything with charcoal this semester. So it might be nice to experiment. Do not forget to sign your 
work. Um, again, the charcoal is not required. It is not required. Um, just wanted to show a little extra something, something in one of our last assignments before the break. Um, when you're done, upload it to Google Classroom, and I cannot wait to see what you do.